Let's go. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Shoo. Yeah. Let's get it. You see, all knew each other. Yeah. I actually with Dylan, I've known him for five, six, six. about six years already. Oh wow. And then when we moved the first yeah, the, from the first time of the podcast, what is it, like two months ago? No, it was like in December. Was oh fuck. Like yeah, yeah. So that about Tambien. Tambien, yeah. It, this is a when you put out energy, you start to attract certain type of people. Factual. And this is where we stand. See, there it is. So. Now you're right. showing love. Definitely. So we're good? You ready? Oh, no. Let's go. One, two. And we are back on another episode of the best podcast out there, a Toast to Life podcast. And we got my brother from the Cause International, Antoine. Yeah. Come on now. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate it being here. Thank you for even putting me on this set, man. I'm grateful. No, man. Appreciate you for coming on the last second fill-in. I know we had to set it up for a week ahead. Yeah. But we need some, for some reason or the other, things happen, and the messages needs to get out there faster. Of course, man. Like Honestly, you got to make it happen. I appreciate you for even, you know, like I said, putting me on here. Uh, I'm just grateful to be here. I'm ready to get going. Hell yeah. Let's get Come started. On. So... You are CEO owner, right? Yes. Of the Cause International, who, man, the movement and the, a big blessing to a lot of high school kids, a lot of kids in other countries, not just here where we stand. Yep. And you're doing this on a big scale level. I appreciate that. Let's, let's talk about that. How, how did the cause come about? What's the cause and what is the cause? The whole 401. Okay. Whole 411. Awesome. So um, thank you for that amazing introduction. And basically how the call started, I played football. <clears throat> I played football in this college called St. John's University. It's in Minnesota. Mm. And that's where I like, I started like everything with the calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously I'm from Pacoima, California. I'm from the Valley. And uh, I was able to get some scholarships to go to uh, Minnesota, continue my academic and athletic career out there. Uh, so basically... I was just, you know, just trying to understand college. I'm first generation. Mm. Um, trying to figure out what I'm doing. Oh, yes, hey. Sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Yeah, Got to get on. those flowers, man. Come on. I appreciate that. that. Hard work. I appreciate that. Me and my mom actually graduated the same year in college. It was crazy. So when she's... So, yeah. Whoa. So, yo, <laughs> yo, we got yeah. to. We got to. Got to give those flowers. Come on, shout out to moms. And then, actually, moms actually stepped it up because right after, she went to get her master's, too. So, Ooh. yeah, she's one of the ones. Leading the... Leading by example. Facts, yes. Yeah, so we were both in it at the same time. So Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, it was amazing. So <clears throat> she graduated from CSUN. Uh, so I was out there in Minnesota doing my thing, figuring out, like, life, figuring out, like, essentially, like, you know, like, what I'm doing. Now, Correct. You know what I mean? So, like, I came from L.A. Um, I'm playing football. I'm pre-med. Uh Get my ass hit in pre-man, bro. It was so hard. Um, what did you play in football? What position? I played running back. Ooh. Yeah, I played running back. So, I was really cool. So Sweet with the feet? Hey, I was decent, you know? <laughs> decent enough to start. So, um, basically, that just happened. And as I was progressing through, like, my career at St. John's, I think my sophomore year, I started washing people's clothes for money. So That's kind of, like, how the cause really started. So I started watching people's clothes for money. And it was crazy because people would be cheering for me because I'd be scoring touchdowns on Saturday. Yeah. And I'd be washing their clothes on Sunday. So it was like they knew who I was when I was knocking on the door. Because, like, our school is, like, 5,000 to 8,000 kids. Mm -hmm. So, like, obviously, like, you know different people on campus. Correct. Like, you, you get to meet a lot, a lot of those people compared to, like, going to, like, a big-name university exactly. where it's, like, I don't know the number. 20, yeah, 20, 50. 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, too much, right? Too much to count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so out of 8,000 people, like, you're going to be – and also I went to rural Minnesota, so there's not too many people of color. So, like, I'm going to stick out a lot. <laughs> um, and, like I said, I was – I played football, so, like, I was the running back. So I was scoring touchdowns. People were cheering for me. And on Sunday, I'll be washing their clothes. So it was a big, humble, like – it was a big reality check just bringing my – like, I'm just – like, damn, bro, I'm getting humbled real quick. Well, why, if you don't mind me asking, you know, uh, biggest thing here and realizing and progressing in a week by week, yeah. 
is really giving the flowers. And I know like Dream Champs, they give it to they give flowers to artists that have been in the game for long. Mm -hmm. Yet, um, shout out to um, the La Puente SGV page that it is like the new central of our SGV community. Yep. And uh, he said, do your thing. And when he posted, he put on there, um, follow the podcast. They're great content and giving shout out basically to people in the community. Of course. And I was like, let me take that back. Let me rephrase that to giving the flowers to the people that we know as coming from our area, coming from our humbling beginnings. So to give you the flowers, like you did something that no one even asked you to do. You right. just saw an opportunity to make some more, make some money, get known, work. Yeah. You just said it humbled you. But what brought, like, what gave you the idea to, like, hey, let me go wash your clothes? Yeah, I think it came down to, like, washing clothes because I was studying so much for pre-med. Because, like, I'll be on a flight or I'll be on a bus to a different state for away games for football. Correct. And I'll be missing, like, my chem class mm -hmm. on Friday or my bio class on Friday. So I'll be coming back with, like, tests. So I have four or five tutors. So, like, I was like, man, I'm always studying. So, like, why not study in the laundromat? And there's a lot of kids who just didn't know how to wash their clothes. I started washing clothes when I was in fourth grade. My mom was on. My mom was not playing with none of that. Fuck, I so, still don't know how to wash clothes. That's inspiring, honest. <laughs> honestly. That's inspiring. My mom not going for none of that. She made me start. Wa she start. She made me start washing clothes like in like third, fourth grade. I was cooking for myself in fifth grade. Ooh. Um. So like, definitely just like, I didn't. My mom is middle class, so like she could. If I needed anything, she's gonna handle it. Like she's gonna handle it. Yeah. You know and. Um, if I asked for anything, she'll do anything for me. And she had the means too. But I feel like when I left home, I left California, I just wanted to start doing stuff for myself. That's a big change. Like yeah. take, taking what, at what, what age were you? Six, 17, 18 when you left? I was actually really young. I was 17 because I graduated college at like 20, just turned 21. So like I was. Yeah, I graduated I was, high school at 17 too. Yeah. So you already know, like we were extremely young. And. My biggest thing, and, and when we coach high school and dealing with high school uh, students, student athletes, it's um, some of them get the opportunity and maybe not be local, which is here in California. Yeah, they might get a letter in the mail from New York, from Texas, from whatever it is. Yeah, oh, that's too far. Oh no, but that, yo, like that's the only offer you got. Like, Facts. That's the only one that that's trying to take an opportunity on you. No, Facts. that's too far. I'm gonna I don't take, understand I'm gonna that. Here. I don't understand that. I, I don't know, man. I'm like, not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I mean, it's the most respect. You got to let me know about this. Let me. I help out a lot of inner city kids. And, like, I help out, like, a Ro Roosevelt High School, Garfield mm. High School. And majority of the population is, like, from Eastern Los Angeles. Correct. It's, like, Hispanics. Um, so, I've got at least probably, like, 20 kids with some offers. Ooh. But not from, like, Cali. As soon as like they gotta leave Cal, as soon as they gotta leave like Southern California, yeah, it's kind of like a no. Oh no! You, can, do you understand? Can you I, tell me why? Because like I, they always tell me this like, it's like it's hard because like they family and yeah. like I don't obviously I didn't grow up in a Hispanic household, um, but one of my my before he's not with us anymore, but he was my vice president of my company. Um, he's from East Los Angeles. His name is Jacob Lucas. He helped me start my entire company. We'll probably talk about it a little bit later when we get into like how the calls happen, but. Um, when I was with him, cause he was still in school when I graduated, he was a year younger, but yeah. then that next year when he came out and he was helping me help kids get out when we were doing this full time, Thanks. um, a lot more kids obviously like connected to him because like they can relate to him more because the stories. Yeah, exactly. Like, but I did not understand like, why, why is it like that? Uh, let, let me say this and how you said with the utmost respect to everybody that yeah. I encounter, that I talk with, um, you know, and this is just from, from me and myself. A lot of us, we're so scared to leave our parents' home, leave that, leave that, that nest. Yeah. Like we're scared of the world. A lot of us can't handle the world by ourselves. We feel like we can't until you throw us in there, then, yo, you got to figure it out. The other thing is... A lot of parents, and this is only, I'm speaking from the Hispanic community, and drop the comment, how you guys feel, what you guys went through, that our parents, mostly dads, put the pressure on us to, if I have a, if a career, if I have a business, I need you to take over this business. 
fuck school, fuck going anywhere else, working when you're going to work with me, for me, and then you're going to run this, take care of the family. So the responsibility that you have already okay, okay. from growing up, just as soon as you get out of high school, yo, you don't have an option to go to college. That is like third option. First wow. option is work with me. And I'm going to, and a quick story. When I graduated college, I didn't know what, when I graduated high school, I had no idea. I took a test to go into to the army because I got denied from one of the, the main schools that I wanted to. Talked to my parents. They were like, no. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Went to go try it at Mount Sac. I didn't make Mount Sac. Took that loss. Played semi-pro for a little bit. Then took the loss again. And when it came time to work, my dad already has an established business. Mm -hmm. I work with my dad now. Um, great business. Only one in his family that that has done anything. I think nine I don't nine kids. He's the only one that has a degree and has a business. Oh, that's amazing. So he already led the way without me knowing, right? I, me naive at, at 18, 19, I never wanted to listen. He was like, hey, come work with me. And just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just in the Hispanic community or in other, in other cultures. Yeah. But our own family downplays us. Like, yo, you, you get that because of your dad. Your dad this, your dad that, your mom this, Facts. your mom that. So what I did, I took that very personal, and I said, all right, well, look, I'm going to go take a job at T-Mobile. Okay. I'm going to go work for somebody else. I'm going to go make my own money. So when I get something, no one can tell me, hey, your dad got you that. Facts. I did this. Facts. So it took about three years until I realized, like, all right, <laughs> I got to kiss more ass in order to get up there. I yeah. said, I'm going to quit. I'll go with you. Yo, you can't because you, don't ha you haven't passed your test. Da -da -da. I was like, no, I'm going to do it. Little did he know, I already put in my two weeks. I was done, bro. I was done. You're out of there. Yeah, but when I'm trying to take it back, you know, I know it was a little, little bit of a little swerve. But uh, is a lot of the parents put the pressure on the kids. Mm -hmm. As soon as you graduate high school, you got to work. You got to take care of us. You got to take care of your family, your brother, your sister, your mom, and you got to help me out in the work. Whatever your dreams were, kiss them goodbye. This is the dream now. Wow. So I feel I feel like leaving, and if you ask people, you got to ask them, I can't leave my mom and my dad. I can't leave them. Little do they know, maybe you leaving them can help them out more when you come back and you're ready. Facts. And I think that's like, I think that's like the biggest thing about um, just, just in general, like the community that we're in right now, just like this culture that we're in right now. I feel like you have to take opportunities. You have to take chances. And um, just being a minority, I, I got, I'm a minority, so, like, I can understand to an extent. Mm -hmm. But, like, at the end of the day, it's like your parents did put you in this position for you to be better. Facts. So you have to take these chances, these risks, in order to make something happen. You, we owe it to them. Yeah, facts, exactly. We, we owe it. You said your mom was a single mom? Or you had yeah, I, my mom was a single mom because I raised by my mom, but my dad was in my life. Okay. I was really more with my mom, though, because I live with her. Yeah. But my dad was in my life um, okay. in different situations. So, like, um, I don't like to ever downplay my father because my father, he taught me hard work. He showed me, like, how to, like, make something out of nothing. He's mm. from Indiana, Gary. He's a nurse practitioner now. He, I seen him climb up. Like, when I, I seen him go from being an LVN to Sh an RN. Shout out your dad, man. Yeah, Give shout out to my dad. Day. Shout out to my dad. Obviously, I'm close with my mom. Like I said, like I lived with my mom. Right. Um, and you know what I mean? There's nothing, there's no ill will towards my father. Uh, but, you know, I have a close relationship with my mom just because of the amount of time that I was with her. So if before we get into the cause, I think the cause is going to be just the, the thing of this podcast, right? Because this is, we want to, uh, young entrepreneurs, you're, you're doing it. But to the young listeners, and, and this is just because what I've seen lately in the last year, man, that us kids, and not us, but the kids that, that we train, that I coach, we deal with a lot of family issues. Yeah. yeah. And just as kids, we want to take on the family issues. And it might be parents separating. It might be parents that are not, not with each other anymore, and they're dealing with that. So what advice can you give them to that young generation that is just lost? Because they, we feel when we're kids, that is our fault that it's happening. Yeah, I think the biggest thing about... What you just said was, you know what I mean? You got to understand, like, what your dreams, what your passion is, and what your, what's your why. Because mm. at the end of the day, like, it doesn't, 
Like, obviously, all of those factors, you know, make a difference Thanks. in what you're going through on your daily basis. But you have to look at that end goal. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing about looking at that end goal and figuring out your why is just putting yourself in different positions to really, you know, reach out to make a difference. Reach out, put yourself in a position where you're vulnerable because that's how you're going to expand. That's how you're going to be great. Yeah. And I think a lot of, a lot of us, we don't have a long-term plan. We don't have goals. Short term, bro. Yeah, exactly. Or if our goals, we think we're going to accomplish these goals overnight. Yeah. I understand you have an end mark or a goal, but you need to make a bunch of different short goals in order to hit that, you know, long term goal. And I think that's where we kind of get lost. And I, I want to help people with that because I have stuff that I want to do this year. But I broke it down into quarters. And then mm. in the quarters, I broke it down into weekly goals. Because if I hit these seven weekly goals, I'm going to hit my quarter goals. And if I hit my quarter goals, I'm going to hit my yearly goals. And when I hit my yearly goals, I'm going to be like, damn, like, I, I did that because I, did not, I didn't, wasn't just grinding aimlessly. You can, you can grind. That's cool to grind. Like, I feel like even with myself, like, like it last two years ago, I work hard. Like, the yeah. biggest thing about me, I'm not that smart. I, well, I am smart, but I'm just like, I have to work harder than others. And let me take that back. I am smart, so we can edit that. <laughs> uh, I am smart. And I used to say that a lot, like I'm not smart, just because I was in positions where other people were like academically smart. Yeah. But I still figure out how to win in that area. You think I, like those people try to, like, no disrespect to nobody, but those people that are educated make you feel less because we're not educated in a sense? Um, I felt like, I felt like, no. I felt like, I was doing that to myself. Mm. I felt like they were just being themselves and speaking on what they know. And then sometimes if I didn't know it, I would be down on myself. In reality, like we came from different upbringings. So, yeah. okay, you might be great in this specific topic. But I'm great but, in this. Exactly. Yeah. And then I start realizing like I need to share that because then it shows my value. Thanks. And then I can learn from them. But then it's not like they can't learn from me. You're giving gems. Everything you're doing, you know, let, let's get into the call. You know, okay. shifting, shifting the gears. Yeah. You are, I, if I read it right, if I remember, you're, you're, good. you're working towards a six-figure to make it happen this year. Oh, right? yeah. No, nah, it, it's going to happen. And, like, mm. just even, like, yeah, no. Nah, my, my bad. My no, bad. No, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Affirmations, man. Yeah, just because, like, just like the whole situation, like, from last year, Man, I think it's, it's going to happen just because of, like, what God has continually shown me. Like, when I was, when I started with the cause, um, I was selling socks. First, I was washing people's clothes. Then I got tired of washing people's clothes. Then I started selling socks. And then when I started selling socks, like, I sold 512 socks in a week. That's how, like. What kind of socks did you sell? Just so like, no, no. So, like, you know, like, <laughs> our school is small, right? Yeah. So, um, like I said, 8,000 kids. And no, they didn't have socks in the uh, student store. Yeah, so I peeped that. And, like, I'm a hustler. I've been hustling my whole life. Like, yeah. I used to throw parties in high school, so I didn't ask, have to ask my mom for any money. So, I used to, like, I've always figured out different ways, but I didn't even know that I was being an entrepreneur. I thought I was just like, I just didn't want to ask my mom for money. <laughs> you just wanted to party and yeah. get money. <laughs> Man, honestly, honestly, the, cra the crazy thing about it is I don't even really be getting litty. I used to just be in my sweatsuit just Collecting money in the door. <laughs> just chilling. Just like, oh, what's up? <laughs> just, she's, just, like, she's like, you want a party? You want a shot? All right, just give me the money first. Yeah, yeah. You know, I honestly, five, ten, you know what I mean? That's what I used to do back then. I used to throw a house party. Did you have to do that uh, girls get in free before eight? No, I used to not. I did not like that. I used to, I'm there. I used I to there. not like that. But what I used to do is. Uh, Bring two I, people, get one free? <laughs> but but I, used to do, I used to do two free shots. Oh. Yeah, so like, if you think about it, like. What is like a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but what is like a, I'm talking about some crazy stuff and I'm changing the world, but like back then, Antoine, what is like a, like a Jose Cuervo Amsterdam bottle? That's like 15, $20, right? Correct. And you could get at least, you know, like probably like I'm half in the shot too, because we in high school. So like. We I'm, get Liddy off of oh, one God, little, little thing. You, you think you're lit. <laughs> so like, I'm over here. <laughs> oh God. Hey, I remember I was in high school. I got so Messed up, and I honestly, all we drink is beer. The next day, I had a last time my mom had a stomach ache because I was hungover. Bro, that's the worst, bro. Never in my life again. No, but I don't know. Oh, for real? Yeah, bro, because I remember I probably got lit lit. I didn't, to this day, 
I was around throwing parties since I was probably like 14. The first time I drank, I was 21. Never drunk, ever. Because I was just, and it was always weird because the next day I had football practice, next day I had training. Yeah. So, like, I was not really in a situation like that, but I never used to get, like, drunk. But, like, obviously when I was 21, I started drinking after college, after football. I kind of got in some situations where I realized this is why I never drunk. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway. We live gonna, and learn, live yeah, and learn. Yeah, live and learn. We, don't we, take that message, guys. Don't take that message. <laughs> no, but you have to, yeah, don't take that message, but it's reality. It's, it's reality, where we came from. Exactly. Yeah, we, we, biggest thing is, and we've said it ourselves, people, yeah. people always see the outcome of the whole progress. Facts. Yeah, they don't know, and our thing, my thing here is, I want people to know where we came from, where we got started. Hey, I wasn't always positive. I wasn't always confident. I Facts. wasn't always smart and hustling in this sense. Facts. I just knew there was a purpose. Facts. And I think the biggest thing about me, too, is I show all my L's. Like, I love showing L's. Got to. Because when I show L's, I become more relatable. And then when I show L's, like, people start like, dang, okay, like, he's not just showing his W's. Like, he's, he's not just showing, like, because like, I think in social media, people go on the gram and it's all cap. Like, Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Oh. It probably took like 400, 400 photos for you to get that picture. It might it go did. like five, like 5,000 different filters to get to that specific spot. And I think, Facts. I think what's really cool about this whole, like what I'm doing is like, now I'm going to show you my L, but you about to fill these W's too. You're going gonna... to see like, dang, he went through all these L's and he still figured out how to get that W. Yeah. So um, that's something that I really enjoy with myself. And like, I'm grateful because it took me a long time to be able to do that in public. Yeah. Because just like in general, like we're... I, for myself, I won't speak for others, but, I, you know, I was self-conscious. I wanted to be, like, I didn't want to be laughed at. Like, I didn't want people to, like, you know, make fun of me. But then I started realizing, like, nah, bro, this is who you are. You got to walk in your truth. So, like, and that goes me back. My back keep going off topic. But when I saw those 512 okay. socks, it went crazy. Um, my school heard about what I was doing. I was able to make, like, 52 or 5,500 off those 512 socks. Um then I was like, dang, like, I had the money in my hand. I was like, man, there's so many young men and women out there in worse situations. Yeah. But who's those young men and women out there to make a difference? Facts. And I was like, damn, like, I never ever, it was crazy too, guys. I used to get, I used to, like, I honestly was like, God, like, why when I didn't have money, you never made me think like this. But as soon as I get money, you're going to make me start thinking, like, I should be giving money out. So I was like, God, like, why did you even do that? Yeah, so, yeah. And, um... I remember my best friend on campus, like one of my brothers forever. He, he used to be the president of the cause. Um, he's no longer with us. But his name is John Oliver. One hand from Southside Chicago, played on our basketball team. Dog. Like crazy. Like with one hand going crazy. Like I've never seen something like that before in my life. He's so inspiring. Um, that is, bro. That is. I think there's actually a guy right now. Right now on Ball is Life. Yeah, Hannah Moore. Or I forgot his name, but he has like... He crazy. only has this. Yeah, crazy. See, my boy John has his hand, but he doesn't have, like, fingers. He just has the nub. Oh. Yeah. So, he like, think about playing. Like, he's playing basketball, so he has to, like. But talk about not making excuses. At all. Not making excuses. At all. You know, and and reason why we we link up is because of our mutual friend, Jackie. Yeah. There's actually, there's actually another mutual friend that we have, um, Diana. Oh, yeah, Diana. How do you know her? So, Weird, bro. So the podcast page by itself is just natural, yeah. right? And I forgot who replied to who. All of a sudden, I believe earlier in the week, she was like, "Hey, do you always do you? Can I send you somebody? Maybe you can get in your podcast." I said, "Go ahead." I was like, "I love it." Yeah. Little did I know, she sent me the cause page. Oh yeah, no, that's my girl. So she sent it. And I was like, "It's gonna be so weird." She's like, "Why?" I'm like, "We already said it." <laughs> that's wild I was like we already set it up I was, she was like for real I was like trust me it's crazy yeah. how our circle that we have that, that we're building right because it's just a circle of positivity encouragement nice. power um, we're all relatable bro we all have like someone that knows somebody that's how it is so it's like when I met her she already knew Jackie when I met Aubrey she already knew Jackie okay when I met one of our other friends, Alejandra. Um, she also got introduced to me by my friend Cindy and Jackie. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? That's how it happens, though. When you grave, when you put out great energy, you're only going to get that reciprocated in, in times 10. So has to. Has to. Has so, to. like, I understand that. Like, I, I remember I met Jackie in, like, a, a business setting. 
And I told Jackie, I was like, bro, like, your energy is going to take you out of here. I don't even know you. Like, I, I was like, I don't even know you. And it was like the first or second time I've ever met her. I said, your energy is going to take you out of here. Yeah. And she was like, wait, what? And I was like, I don't know what you do. Like, I know you're doing this, but I know you should be doing something else, too. Because, like, just who you are. And, like, uh, that's how we became close. Like, she's one of my good friends. I mess with Jackie a long way. Um, just a great girl. Just, like, great positive energy. For sure. That's why I, when I linked up with you, it was amazing. And, you know, that's why we're here talking about what we're talking about. Yeah, this is literally a year ago after you dropped off the first uh, drop of merchandise to my high school team. Oh, yeah. You're like, King, we got to link up. And I left that moment when I, on the car ride home, I'm like, damn, bro, that energy. It's crazy, right? It's wild. Oh, so man. with bringing it back to the, to the cause. To, we got so to much great boy. talks. We keep yeah. it in. <laughs> to the cause. And like you were talking about your. Hey, uh, John. Your John. So, yeah. So like once we, we sold the money, we had like 5,500 or 5,800. I forgot exact amount. And I was like, bro, I feel like we got to give back. So I brought my best friends on campus. I was like, hey, y'all, I made this money. And I want to give back. And this was like in Minnesota, Done with our first semester, of, uh, sophomore year, done with our semester of finals. Um, it's first semester, so it's, like, in the winter. It's negative four. It's snowing. Ugh. You know, I'm from Cali, so I'm like, this is crazy. We don't do good in the winter. At all. <laughs> so I'm telling, I'm telling my bros, like, what should we do? And John's like, bro, let's, let's go to my hometown in Southside Chicago, and let's get back to the Boys and Girls Club where I grew up. And I was like, say less. So then we literally drove our school's bus. We rented out a bus from our school. We drove our school's bus from Minnesota to Chicago. And then we went to this Boys and Girls Club. We retrofitted it. Um, we gave back 3500 out of the 58 or 5500 I forgot exactly. Yeah. Um, and this little girl came up to me. Uh, and, like, we gave them all Christmas gifts. It was, like, 150 kids. We gave them all Christmas gifts. We gave them, like, like new PlayStations. We figured out different things that we could do. Um and honestly, bro, like this little girl came up to me and said, Antoine, thank you for giving me my first Christmas. And that feeling right there, when she told me that, it was over. It was like, this is way better than scoring any touchdown. This is way better than, you know, like anything I've ever felt like like that before. So that little girl, she acting like I changed her life. But in reality, she changed my life. And that was that moment where I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know what this is, selling socks. I don't know what, what, what we're doing. But I know for me, we need to figure out this, and we need to figure out how this is going to be my daily life. Do you feel like at that moment in time, you were meant to be there? Yeah, it was meant to be. Like, mm. I've never thought about giving back money ever. Yeah. And as soon as I got the most money I've ever made off of anything, I was like, man, I should give back. It changes, bro. Like, this is the, the biggest thing right now, right, that we're, I'm not going to say we're rich, but we're comfortable. And we're working, we're working towards a big, a big project, a big uh, vision. Yeah. And throughout the process, and someone, and again, I was telling them earlier, and someone told me yesterday, bro, you're not making any money. Like, you, you need to figure this out. I'm like, if I chase the money, it's going to keep running. But if I chase my vision and my dream and my passion, my gift, it's paving the way already. Facts, man. Facts. God damn, we're out of here. <laughs> facts. Hey, facts. I that was that one. That was that one line you need to drop the mic. <laughs> Honestly, now they told you I can't. Do, I can't do this yet. <laughs> he, said, he said. He said. I can't drop this. I can't. <laughs> this costs too much. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, like I feel like what you just said is right because I honestly feel like. We're millionaires. The money just got to catch up. Yes, sir. And I really feel like that every single day in my life. So, um, like, just that whole experience, what she taught me, it just made me realize, like, dang, okay, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And then from then, I started figuring out, like, different different ways how I can continue to grow what I was doing. So I went from socks to shirts to shirts to hoodies to hoodies to crewnecks to joggers to sweatsuits to now doing apparel for um, high schools and colleges and having a streetwear line. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and let's take it. Let's take it back. Okay. When after selling socks, you gave back to Chicago. Yeah. Um, is that when you guys thought about let's make you call it a foundation or a movement? Man, honestly, I don't even think. I don't even think we even realized what we were doing yet. Uh, I don't even, th 
we still didn't understand. Like we knew the magnitude of what we were giving back to and we what we did in Chicago because after we did that event in Chicago, right away we got hit up by um, the number one radio station in Chicago. Mm. I got put on the radio station. First time, my first radio station ever, mic'd up. I'm on the radio, did not know what I was doing. I was hella nervous. Um, I'm looking at everyone else like, bro, y'all should come on too. They're like, nah, bro, like <laughs> this is all you, man. Like the number one radio station in yeah. Chicago, and it, and it got ninety-seven point three, and I'm like, oh no! So I went there, I did my thing. Um, I also became one of the board members of Southside Chicago um, in the Boys and Girls Club, and then when I went back to campus, somehow word got back to campus. Um, when I came back, cause remember I told you I did it after my semester. Yeah. When I came back for that next semester, that new year. Well, the first week, a paper was written about it. Um, also, I got hit up by my president, and my president of my school connected with me and was like, hey, I want you to go um, into this entrepreneurship program. And I was like, like I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was. Yeah. So I was like, what's an entrepreneur? And he started laughing. He said, bro, you're the definition of an entrepreneur. Ooh. And I was like, dang, like, I still don't know what that is. And, <laughs> and then he, like, broke it down to me. I was like, oh, okay, cool, because I'm pre-May. That's so, right. Yes, yeah, so like, I don't even know really what I'm doing. So, like, he put me in this situation. I applied. I got in. I didn't even know what I was applying for. I just did it because he told me to. And, bro, my school got behind me all the way. Shout out to St. That's John's. That's love, bro. That's um, love. I lived in China. Um, yeah, crazy. I lived in China. Um, I pitched. I was in a pitch competition in Denver. Um I interviewed at Google. I interviewed at Facebook. Um, job offer from Google. Um, all because of my school. They helped me incorporate my company. Paid for everything. Like, did not know what I was doing. And, like, I just kept learning through them. And so, I, as, so it wasn't, like, when the company came about that you knew 100% what was happening. No. As you go, you learned it. As I Exactly. As I went, I continued to learn. And when... It went from Chicago, then we gave back to Skid Row in L.A., then we gave back to Detroit, we gave back to Flint with the water crisis. Then this was a pivotal moment for the company, and this is when I realized, okay, this is what we need to start doing. This is a movement, yeah. and this is a change. It was my senior year, and one of, my fo- one of the founders, he's not with us again anymore. It's my guy, though. His name is um, Abdi Musi, and he was the co-founder of the cause, and... He basically said it. He pulled me to the side, like, because, like, people in people at our school was, like, really showing love because, like, we were, you know, making a difference. You were doing it. Yeah. And he looked at me and he said, bro, like, you're really not changing nothing. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. You, like, we really just went to all these places and gave back. He said, no, you, we gave back to change that weekend, that month. But we're not changing anything. It's still repetitive. It's still repetitive. So he's like, he was like, it's cool to, you know, like we start getting acknowledged. And he was like, it's cool to get acknowledged, bro. But like, we need to figure out if you really want to be the cause international, if we really want to say like, we're going to change the world. Yeah. Anytime you give back, you need to change it. Facts. And then I was like, I would hit my ego again because I thought I was doing the right thing. And then he was like, I was like, damn, like, what's he talking about? But then, I was like, 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 what do you mean by that, bro? Like, we're changing it. And I kind of got mad. I was yeah. like, what are you talking about? And he was like, bro, I was born and raised in a refugee camp in Kenya. Mm. And I didn't, I had to wait in lines for water. You're just giving some toys back. You're not doing shit. He said, he said you need to figure out how you're going to, we need to figure out how we're actually going to make a difference. Facts. I don't want to be with a company that says they're going to make a difference and we're just doing something cool for the month and get acknowledged for it. Want to make a bigger impact. Yeah. And he wants to cha- we want to change something. Actually change. Yeah, actually, not just change something for a month. And I was like you don't want to you don't want to just impact the, you know, and it's by emotions, right? And we don't want I don't want to make you just feel happy Facts. for the day, for a couple minutes, for an Facts. hour. I want, I want you to be content. I want you to be grateful. I want you to be like, bro, yeah. like this dude came in into my city, into my place, my home, and made a big impact. Exactly. And I think I, I realized, like, man, like, 
maybe I was doing it just for myself. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't really, like, obviously I was doing it for them because I loved it. Correct. But, like, was I really making a difference? And then I was like, okay, like, all right, bet. Like, how do we, how do, we do that then, Abdi? He said, well, we don't have enough money right now to, like, really make a difference in America. But we say we're international, so why aren't we going international? And I was like, all right. And one of our, our vice president is in Guatemala for study abroad. And he's from East Los Angeles, and Guatemala is right next to Mexico. So, like, he was seeing his family in Mexico, going back to school in Guatemala. And I hit him up, and I was like, bro, like, we're trying to go to Guatemala and give back. And he was like, all right, I'm going to make it happen. So then he figured it out, and then we figured out different rural villages. And then by the time it came to it, we had, like, we had a week and a half to make $8,000 in college. We, and we had no inventory. So we sold socks and shirts again. Made $8,000 Thursday, Thursday night. Flew out Friday morning, bought our tickets to Guatemala. Went to Guatemala, installed water filters. Now those kids have um, running water for the next eight years. Jesus Christ. And then... And then he and then my boy Abdi hit me and said, see, now that's making a difference. And he said, now we need to figure out how we can correct it for a lifetime. And I was like, bro, this guy, this guy keeps challenging us. Hell yeah, bro, you got to cop it up <laughs> yeah. for that. Yeah. You- yeah, and I, and I didn't even realize what he was saying. But when I went to, the, when I went to those rural villages, when I went to that... When I went into Guatemala and I was able to see like what real poverty is, yeah. that's poverty. You know, that's when individuals don't have running water, when they're walking, you know, miles to get to school. Yeah. And you're just under the impression like you're having it bad and you're in America because maybe your parents aren't together or maybe like um, you don't have the flyest clothes or stuff like that. And that's yeah. nothing compared to what these kids are going through. And when I was in there giving back, I was like, it made me realize, like, bro, I'm rich. I'm rich. I have my mother who can help me. You know what I mean? Like, I have everything that I need. I have all the essentials. I have running water. Yeah. So, like, who yeah. am I to ever, like. Bro, we take it for, for granted, granted, bro. bro. We, and and let, me, let me say this, too. Let me look at, at the camera for, for people yeah, that, know. you know, know, for people that say living living outside of here. It's a lot better. And I heard it from a late and great Eric Thomas. He said, oh, yeah. I work so hard. And if I lived anywhere else, people don't get rewarded anywhere else. I work so hard here and I get rewarded. And I'm able to use my abilities and my funds to help others. My message. You can go work hard. In, and for us, like you can go work hard in Mexico. Yeah, it's going to get taken away. And, and the reason, and I'm not. Any shots, but you work so hard over there, and they tax you. Yo, you made a million dollars today? I'm going to tax you half of that without doing anything. Then what do you do? All that hard work, harvesting, growing growing cows, you know, making everything you possibly can over there, tequila, mezcal, anything. Yeah, there is somebody higher up that is ready. Yo, whatever you made, I won't have. It's corrupted. Yeah. Corrupted. Exactly. Biggest thing, and and even here, how you said earlier, just because of what you said, that we have running water, we have hot showers. Yeah. Because if you go over there, yo, you know, if you're not the first one to take a shower, you're gonna get a cold ass shower. Facts. Um, food wise, and and the biggest thing, God, biggest the food crazy. right? The food is crazy. The food is crazy. My stomach was on twelve, <laughs> but it, it, I had to go through it though, because I, I was in their city. You know what I mean? So like, I was just in there, just going through it, and I was like. It made me just like be grateful. You, ha- we have to like. I literally we parked our we parked the car. I not the car. I was driving a minivan in Mexico. As I said, I'm good with the minivan. Everybody fits in here. Park it, and one of the dudes like, "I'm gonna clean your windows. Go for it. Cleans it. Whatever you want to give me." I'm talking about some people are giving them ten pesos. Ten pesos over here, bro. It's like, <laughs> you're barely, You're giving this guy a dollar. You're giving that these these dudes are working for a dollar, two dollars, four dollars, a couple cents, and it's like to us, it's like, bro, we get paid eighteen, twenty, twenty five people get get an hour, yet we still end up broke. Yeah, 
And I think people don't understand that until they go out there and they really realize, sure. like, okay, no, nah, this makes people don't understand, like, yeah, you go for a vacation for a week, two weeks, you're gonna come home, you're gonna make more money. But think about making a career over there. What are you gonna do to work? Either you're a doctor, right. a lawyer, or a big salesman for a corporate company, you'll make your money. But to give more yeah. back to these people, to give advice to these people, you know, give give me some jewels. No, I just what's what's the best best thing you can tell someone about, you know, working with your money? Um money advice. I think what I've learned, you know, like, you know, just coming into my twenty fifth year, um, I'm just learning how to like really save. And like this year I have a budget plan. Like every time I touch money, I know where it's going to. Every time I spend money, I have this app that it calculates for me. And, like, I'm so intentional now that – because in order to hit these goals, like, people always say, oh, bro, I want to live in a house or I want to do this, I want to do that. What are your goals with it? Like I said earlier, like, how are you going to get there? Like, you got to understand, like, what you need to put up every single month. And if you're not – if you didn't get it that month, you have to figure out how you have to go hard that next month to get it. Yeah. So – I think the biggest thing is just, like, it goes back to, like, what I said. Anything in life, I feel like it kind of comes down to planning. And not Ooh. just saying it, but actually being consistent. I think the hardest thing right now in our culture is being consistent with anything that you do and planning Facts. it out. Facts. People start something, and then they're easy to just give it up. Give it up. On to the next. Exactly. And that's something that I think I learned with the cause, like, to be consistent. Like, with something that you truly care about and you truly love and you want to accomplish, like, you really going to give it all for it. Like, like I sacrificed so much for this company. And, like, I think it's year seven, and I'm finally reaping the rewards. And I think I've just been through, like, so many L's and so many times where it's almost going to be, like, my breakthrough. And and God, it was like, you're not ready yet. Mm-hmm. And I think even after, like, the Guatemala trip um, coming back and then Abby saying, like, like, okay. Like, we did that. Like, now how are we going to do something for a lifetime? I was like, dang, bro. Like, all right. Like, this, he always wants more. And in my head, I was like, why? Like, we just did something crazy. But I realized God wanted more. And God was speaking to me through Abdi. Abdi needs to be in my life because it went from me thinking, like, here. Shoes and socks. Or well, socks and shirts. Yeah, to, out, to, like, me thinking, like, okay, how am I going to change the world? Yeah. I just don't want to change my city. I want to change the world. And. Then after Guatemala, we were able to go to Kenya. And that's when we, we went off to his home, his home city, and we were able to install a water filtration system. Now 8,000 people will have running water for the rest of their lives. That's what he was talking about the entire time. That's fucking and huge, that's, bro. And I think that was, like, made me realize, like, when I did that, in six weeks we had to make 47,000. I've never made that, like, ever in my life. Like, in that sh- short amount of time. How'd ever. you do it? If you don't mind, if you don't, if you don't no, mind me good, asking, how, how did you raise 47000 Bro, it was crazy. In a short amount of time. Six like, that, that, that's what people make maybe in a year. Yeah. If that. Yeah. We did that. And, and, it, and think about this too, y'all. We made forty seven k and we gave it all away. That's, that, that is also like another, like, when you don't understand when it's in your account and you're like, dang, like. And go buy a band. Yeah. Or like, you know, we, we six <laughs> figures with it now. And you're like, wow, like we did this. But I think it was really just like me realizing and stepping into like who I'm supposed to be, who I'm destined to be. Like me realizing like I can do anything in this world. Yeah. Like I really look at any goal and I'm like, I'm, like I, I can accomplish it. And then when I told, like people were like, my team was like, bro, like that's, we can't do that. We need to extend it. Thanks. And I was like, no, nah, we going to do it, bro. And once they realize, like, oh, bro, he's not tripping. Like, he's not playing. Like, yeah. he really thinks he can do this. Like, okay, like, I guess we got to do this with bro. Facts. So then, like, I, I made everybody, not everybody, everybody who could come. Like, Abdi, my boy Jacob. Um, John couldn't come, but he was helping out from Chicago. Uh, my girl, uh, Maddie. Literally, we had, I had everybody living in my house. We'll wake up at 6 a.m. And we'll be going to sleep at 2 a.m. 6 a.m., 2 a.m. Hitting DMs, getting blocked, going Melrose, selling, going Ventura, selling, calling different people, calling our whole contact list, messaging everybody. When they're tired, bro, get up. We got to go. 
get up 6 a.m. and got to go. For six weeks straight, I made everybody get up at 6 a.m. I made everybody go to sleep at 2 a.m. Because we were on a mission, bro. And Damn. then a week before when we hit that, I was like, bro, there's no way we did that. Like, I knew we could do it, but I was high-key just saying it. Yeah. Like, I, like, I just had so much power. Like, I think, like, as a... Um, but you manifest that. Yeah, I think... When you're leading leading the group, right? Yeah. Because there, there's always has to be like a head of a head of a household. There has to be like a head of the company, a head of whatever it is, whatever group you're in. That even when the tables are turned and everything's against you, there has to be one person that's no, we're gonna do it. It's possible. Facts. Oh, but fuck, I don't think it's gonna happen. No, 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 no. It's it's good. We're gonna make this happen. So yeah. even if there's a lot of shit going on. You don't tell them that, yo, it's literally impossible. You're literally telling them it, the impossible is possible. Facts. And they literally have to believe you. They have to. And, like, the only reason they believe me, I think, is because, like, we've done it before. And, yeah. like, we've been, like, we've been put in situations where, like, we made it happen. Facts. Now, our goal was 60, though. Our goal was 60,000 because I want to come back home with money. So like to do everything was like forty two thousand. So we came back home with five thousand in our account. That's so hard as a business. Nice. So like, I didn't want to go yet, and they were like, "Nah, bro." Like then they were like, "Nah, bro." Like we have to go, we have to go. We can't wait till we get sixty. And I was like, "All right, leaders know when to lead, and leaders know when to follow." Ooh. So I was like, "All right, my team want to go, so let's go." And also, I'm a leader, but I never like saying like I'm a leader. Like, yeah. I've never been one of those people who are like, like, this is my company. I'd be like, oh, it's our yeah. company. Like, er at the end of the day, everybody knows who the founder is. Everybody knows their role. You don't need to, like, proclaim, like, what you do. Yeah. That's just not who I am. I, but dude, I heard it. Uh, sorry to cut you off. I heard it um, actually earlier in the week that Vic Blends, who is an amazing entrepreneur, spokesperson for the young generation okay. and this generation, and he said it, I'm never going to outshine my brothers. When we go into any restaurant, any place, you don't you don't know who the CEO is because we both carry each other the same way. Facts. If if I'm eating, we're all eating. If I'm struggling, then somebody got me. If they're struggling, hey, we're not gonna show that. I got you. Yeah. I'm never gonna outshine my brothers because you're my brother. Like who wants that? Yeah. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be here, sit in this chair and be like, all right, well, I'm the king. You guys go and uh do all the all the work. No, no, no. What do we got to do? Let's all do it together. Yeah. I got this. Let's put our hands in it. Let's put yeah. our hands together and let's exactly. make it work because, hey, it is a team. And, and we said it earlier, like, it, it's cool winning by yourself, right? Facts. Getting the money, winning, cool. But when you have a team and we're all eating. Oh, my. It's we're, the best. We're, we're going from eating at, at a McDonald's table playing as kids and now we're eating at one of the top restaurants in, in L.A. Yeah. We're it's, eating at a catch. We're eating at the purge. We're eating whatever you want. Yeah, we're all here. Yeah. We're it's all a progression. Here yes. And I think and I think that's what makes it so special when you're with the team. And um, I think that was, like, really cool to, like, just be a part of that whole situation because it really made me realize that we could do anything and everything that we want to do. Thanks. So with that being said, like, after Kenya, um, I think it got us really moving as a unit. And then I think the hardest thing that the call, the hardest thing that I've been through with the calls happened. So, like, after Kenya happened, we were like, man, we can do this. Now it's time to put it on overdrive. Momentum was going. So, like, we did that was, we did streetwear, and then we also, like you said, we do apparel for, like, high schools Great. and colleges. So going into um, that 2019, like, ending it out, because um, COVID happened 2020, right? The beginning of 2020? Or is it beginning of 2019? 2019. Beginning 2019. of 2019? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, beginning of 2019, right? So going into that 2018 year, right? We signed seven. We signed um, seventy-five contracts with schools, going into that upcoming twenty nineteen to twenty twenty school year, and that's like a quarter of a mil, most we've ever done in our life. Put it all together. We all lived in my mom's house, getting straight to the grind, and we were like, "Oh, we're out of here now. Everything's signed." And then COVID happened, and every all our contracts got voided. So like literally, like we just busted our ass for six months. Like, we made people not sign with Nike, not sign with Adidas, to sign with the cause. And COVID happened, and everything shut down. Like, all the contracts was gone, voided. 
We didn't know when school was coming back. So, like, we just sacrificed, like, a year and a half, two years. And I think about, like, the people on our team getting offers from, like, Fortune 500 companies, you know, like, going to master's. And yeah. they all sacrificed it for the cause. To just, like, get let down and, and not, let me, let me rephrase, not let like get let down, get set back. Yeah, set back. And they already, like, you know what I mean? Like, when you can be making sixty five to $70,000 and you, we all breaking off crumbs, you know, to get by. Yeah. You know, puts you in a position like, man, is this worth it? And then because of that whole COVID situation, I lost my entire team. And I think that was, like, the hardest thing because I was gut checked. I was like, hey, do you really want this? Do you really, really want this? Because yeah. everybody just left you. The only person that's really with you is your girl. And... You know what I mean? Like, she has her own dreams and aspirations. Correct. So, like, I think it was a gut check to me and made me realize, like, I could fold, go back to school, you know, be a nurse or be a doctor, be a nurse practitioner, whatever I was going to do, or um, I can lock back in. Thanks. And obviously, I chose to lock back in. And now, you know, beginning of 2022, well, really 2021, yeah. the last quarter, um, because that was the last time from 2019 to 2021, it's the first time I quit this last semester, yeah. kids was able to play. Because the other time was like a month where they had to play a bunch of games, you know? Great. And, you know, the last month of 2021, the last quarter, I mean, of 2021, uh, the calls were able to, you know, make six figures. Um, where also we hired three people full time. And I literally went from, you know, losing everything to, you know, in two years now having employees. And I think just this whole situation, this learning process made me realize, like, if you want anything, and if, like, I already knew it after Kenya, but, like, this was, like, testimonial, like, gut check. Like, bro, do you really want this? You lost it all. Yeah. And um, I still figured out a way to come through. And I think from now, like, just what we've been through and, like, the whole journey, like, you've seen the L's and now you've seen the W's. Now it's, like, it's game time. I feel like nobody can stop me. I feel like I'm Unstoppable. in a path. You, you feel me? Like, I, respectfully, like, everybody went in their own way. But I feel like anytime somebody's in front of me and we have to go, you know, like, not battle it out, but we have to figure out, like, who's going to get this job. It's me. It's me. Yeah. It was already chosen for me, though. 100%. Like, yeah. you know, respectfully, you know, a lot, and it's a lot of people when they're not ready and they don't do good with someone with the same power or more, yeah. we, we talk down. But how you said respectfully, I'm me. Mm -hmm. How Kevin Gates said, I'm him. Facts, I'm him. I'm him. Yeah. So and whatever you think, I'm him. Exactly. Why? Because I am who I am, and whether you like it or not, I'm moving the way I am. Facts. I'm going to be where you don't want me to be because that's just where I'm meant to be. Oh. That was damn. another one. That was another one. That was another one. That was another one. Whoa. Hey, he's just dropping gems today, guys. <laughs> that's just what it is today for him. Yeah, for free. <laughs> for free. For free. So give us a gem. Best advice to, let's say, an 18-year-old you, man. Okay. Um, man, continue to stay down. And I think I was able to do that, but I think I lost some time because I was caring about what other people thought. And I was caring about, like, not following my own dreams and aspirations. Right. And if I just pushed the gas pedal a little bit earlier, who knows where I'll be. But at the end of the day, I'm grateful for all the L's. That I took because now these W's taste and feel so much better. So just young me, just like keep keep chasing that dream. And keep grinding. You know, keep grinding, keep chasing that dream and keep honestly believing in yourself. Yes, sir. That's that's honestly what I could say. Cause like honestly, I did just that, you know, and now I'm here. So and I can't wait to see what this next year, the two years looking like because it's crazy, man. And like it's kind of even like in a moment, like I almost last week I was last week. I even I don't even cry. I probably cried like five times, six times in my life. Um, I cried last week because I was just thinking to myself, like I was really just driving yeah. and I closed the school, like a really good private school. And I was like, damn, bro, like I did this. You did this and you really had nothing like you really like it was over for it. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm just grateful that like I didn't give up because I could have gave up so many times. But I always figured out like, oh, no, like I'm meant for this. And I'm just grateful that I just didn't give up. So, bro, it I I want to literally take like ten seconds. 
I want to clap it up for you because of what everything you did, bro. Everything you did mm-hmm. from not how you said from not having anything to making something to building that dream, getting it taken away, staying with it, and building it back. Yeah, bro, you're doing something. I want to give it up. For you. You. I want to give it up for you, bro. I appreciate you. So thank you, brother. Best, give me the best sentence to describe the cause, man. How would you just if somebody brand new no has no idea what the cause is, who they are? Yeah. Best phrase to it. I think honestly, the Cause International is a company that customizes apparel for high schools and colleges and has a streetwear brand. And you know, we get back to those in need. It's that simple. It's nothing too much. It's nothing, you know. We have to go in paragraphs about. We sell apparel because we want to change the world. I don't even care about apparel, honestly. I care about what I can do with the future. That's why I zone in with high school kids. That's why, you know, do apparel so I can go travel around the world and install water filtration systems. You know, at the end of the day, it's like I can speak through apparel through everyone. So Ooh. I think that's kind of like why I'm zoned in. And now I can't wait to change it because there's really nobody like us in my field. And my, my competitors, I'm already beating them and I'm in a low scale. So as I continue to rise, I continue to, you know, to stay down and follow the journey. It's only going to get bigger and better. And the, at the end of it, and which is so great, because, like, when people be like, oh, I get big, I'm going to change. Like, I've had, like, like I've had, I remember when I made my first 5000 was selling socks, and I thought I was rich. Yeah. And I remember making 100000 last, you know, last three quarters, and I'm like, and I'm giving back because, like, it's me. It's yeah. in me. I love giving back. I love changing the world. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to, I want a legacy, you know, to live on. So, I just can't wait to continue to keep going, man. So, yo, I don't think it gets better than that. Yeah. So, yo, we got another happy dad in there. I got another one. Come on, man. We got to end it right. Oh, we got a happy dad. You, you, you want one? Hey, come on. Talk to me right. Come on. I'm Ubering anyway. <laughs> That's otra? Yes. We do an emerging right here. You know, it don't matter. Happy dad is a happy dad. Shout out to happy dad. The Nelk boys, full send. Wow. You no, know, know, know where we're at, man. Know where we're at. But I wanted to get this on to get our, our last toast to life, to a great podcast, to a great human being, a great person. Energy is wild. The movement is crazy. Thank you. Thank you. You got to be a part of it and you got to stay tuned because 2022, we've said it ourselves, is going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. The purpose that we have is greater than what we ever imagined. And Yo, there is no stopping what is meant to be. Facts. No stopping. So with that, a toast to life to a great episode 43. Thank you. Appreciate you coming, big brother. Of course, man. Appreciate you. Let's go, Thank man. You for having me. Episode 43. Come on Let's now. go. Hey. Three beautiful black princesses. Yes, um, sir. And in general, just, uh, you know, just being a minority, um, undergoing, like, what we have to go through on a daily basis. And not using it to stop me, just using it as motivation to become better and unapologetically me. Yeah. So, uh, I honestly want to support, yeah. I want to support my women, my, my queens. And so I want to make a hoodie uh, designed for them. So, um, we did, like, an Our Cause t-shirt during the BLM movement, and I went viral. And we were on the uh, we were on the BT Awards for Roddy Rich and um, the uh, the Baby's music yeah, video, yeah, yeah. and we we're front and center because of our message. So, and I sold it for free. So I just that was a donation because I couldn't give the donation that back because all my schools got voided. <laughs> so um, I just took you know like I made I think it was like a thousand T-shirts and sure. I gave them all for free. But if, obviously, if you live in a different state, you gotta pay for shipping. But yeah, if not, yeah, yeah. you come pick it up for me. But the message is bigger than the apparel. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And that's what the cause is about. You know what I mean? Like, what's really cool about it because a lot of companies say they do things, but like, you yeah, can just look at our track record. We don't really gotta talk. Really doing it. You know, we don't really have to speak. You, you know? know how to explain this? It's gotta be us. That's it. Sheesh. That's it. There it is, bro. <laughs>